Hey, what do you think of this effect we got over here? Can you see it? It's the bar at the bottom that is like a menu. So we got asked how to do this effect by someone on one of our live chats. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it without using any extra plugin and just a minimal amount of code, but that's more for a styling purpose, okay? So it's where you could have a menu system like this. You know, you could have other icons or other things as well appearing within there, but it just sits there at the bottom of the page but it's kind of offset off the bottom. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. What I've got are four sections. I have section one, section two, which is here, section three, which is another section down here with an image, and then I got section four. Now this is just a footer. The reason I put this in here is just to show you how it's gonna work, um, because you do have to account for the footer, because if I go back to what the finished article is, if you don't account for the footer, you're gonna to get to the bottom and your footer might appear over your header. So have a think about the height of your footer, but let's pretend you've done that. So I've got four sections, okay? I've got my footer, and then I've got my um, blah, parallax background sections over here. There's no text in there, because so I'm just showing you the effect of how it works. What we're now gonna do is add in another section. So let's go all the way to the bottom. And down here, I'm gonna add in another section. Now this section, you can make it as convoluted and complicated as you want. I'm gonna keep it really simple. I'm gonna make it a box, and I'm gonna go for a width of 497. 500 is normally the smallest, but you can adjust it to go smaller. Why am I going for 497? Well, that's because I've already tested this out when I was building it, and that size works really well for the style I'm going for. So I've gone for 497. I'm gonna set the gap to be no gap, and I'm gonna leave the height to be, um, in fact, I'll come back onto this. I'm gonna leave the height at the minute to be zero. There's no height whatsoever. And the column position, I'm gonna leave as middle. Can you see here, we've got a little bit of a frosted effect as well. Can you see that? You can just about see the background coming through, but it's a bit blurred. And if I go to the third section here, if I just put it over Taylor's face, I think, I hope you can see that properly, right? It starts to blur. I hope that is coming through okay, all right? So there is a frosted effect as well. So let's just go over here. I'm gonna go to this column and I'm gonna make the background of this column be a dark color like that. I'm gonna go for a black color, something like that. I'm then gonna paste in some CSS code and that will give a frosted effect. To do that though, what you need to do is you need to go to advanced. I'm gonna give this a class name of frosted. So I'm now just gonna drop this code in. The code is in the description, by the way. It's got an effect of uh, four. Now, if you were to make this high like 100 pixel and put 100 pixel in here as well, when you do the blur effect, it will be very, very blurred. And I find that four or five or six works really, really well, okay? But you will get to decide that as you start playing around with it. Now, there is no blur effect going on at the moment. That's because there's no content in there whatsoever and we haven't adjusted anything either. But let's do that. So what we have over here is we have some buttons. These are buttons and you'll notice that when you hover over them, you get like a white border effect. The white border effect is something extra that I will show you, but you don't have to go for it. So I'm just gonna go over here and just zero, zero out the, uh, the, the uh, margin and padding for the column. And for the section as well, I'm just gonna do the same as well. We will come back onto that because we do have to adjust this to get the overlap, but that will become clear in a moment. Let's just drop in a button, like so, okay? We have a button, and I'm just gonna leave the button to say the word click here. I'm gonna go over to the advanced tab, and I'm gonna make this button be a custom, because what will happen is we're gonna add more and more buttons in, and I want them to sit side by side, so we're gonna leave that as a custom width for now. I am though gonna change the background of this, and I'm gonna just make this completely transparent, for now. Now what we're gonna do is on the button, I'm now gonna drop in a little bit of code into here, into this button. So if I go over to the button, I go to advanced, and I go to custom CSS. So let's just have a look at this right now, okay? It is saying selector, i.e. for the button, border radius of 25. Let me just extend this like that. So the border radius is 25, 0, 0, 25. What does that mean? Your radius works in a clockwise fashion. So you go top, right, bottom, left. Does that make sense? It's top, right, bottom, left. So I'm saying the top and the left has 25, 25. The rest of it is zero, so full on right angle. The border width is two pixel. 
the border color will be uh, a, a, a white color. Actually, no, it's transparent. Sorry, let me get this right. It is a transparent color. Okay, there's no color whatsoever applied to it. And it's a border style of solid. When you hover, select to hover, we've got exactly the same values, except now the color is um, a full on white. And the background color for this, um, basically this button will now be uh, black, but it'll be slightly, there'll be a little bit of transparency on it, which is why I've got 00000 AD. So watch what happens now when I hover over this. Can you see you're getting that style? So let me just do this, okay? And at the moment, the button is down here because we haven't done any offsets. Look when I move over it. Did you see that there, right? Okay, so, let, so now we're getting a bit of a curved effect. However, we do need to adjust the column. So I'm gonna go back to the column, go to style, go to border, and over here, I'm gonna put in 2525. So if you now look at this now, can you see now we get this nice um, a little um, a white effect appearing around it? Now there is one little thing I do need to do here, which I realized as I was experimenting, is that what you need to do is I need to adjust the padding of this button. So I'm gonna go over here and zero or everything out. And I'm gonna give this the values of 10, 10, 10, 17. Okay, because I found this worked really well with fitting it within the column, hence why I gave it a width of 497. If you're not doing a curved effect, you don't need to do what I'm doing, okay? You can skip completely past this, but I'm just showing you how it works. I'm now gonna duplicate this button, okay? And when I've duplicated it once, I'm gonna go to the style, I'm gonna go to the um, CSS for this particular button, okay? Go to the custom CSS, and I'm going to change uh, the radius for this to be zero. Now this should make obvious sense. We have a curve here, but there's no need for the curve there because it's now like a full on rectangle. So that's now done. I can duplicate, duplicate again. I'm gonna duplicate this button. I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna move it to be right at the end there. So now it comes right at the end after all the other buttons, okay? I'm gonna go into here and I'm now gonna modify the size of this one. So I'm gonna go over to my advanced, or the radius of it, go to custom CSS, and I'm now gonna flip the value. So now the 25 will actually be over here, because it's now on the other side. I hope that is making sense to everyone. We are now getting that effect at the bottom then. That's working oakly, oakly, doakly fine. Now the obvious problem here is that that menu bar is not sticking to the bottom. Like look, it just disappears completely out of view. So we're gonna adjust that. I'm just gonna move my um, uh, mouse to be, or my screen to be like that, so it's just hidden out of view. We're on that section though with the menu bar, okay? I'm gonna to go to advanced uh, uh, tab for your section, go to motion effects, and I'm gonna say, make this be a sticky at the bottom. And you can see now it's kind of appeared there. What I'm then going to do is go to my advanced tab. We're still in the section, don't forget. And I'm gonna give it some padding of about, I think it was 60, something like that. So, so far, so good. That looks, that looks okay, right? But don't be fooled by this because there is still a little bit more you need to do. So look, when I scroll down, it still goes above. So it's like, well, we've now got it sat not right over the bottom, but it's still doing that, which is completely wrong. I don't want it to go over the footer. So this is where you've got to go back into your margin and now what you do is you adjust the top margin and I believe the value I got to, I've got it written down here was 99. So I go doop, 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 doop. There you go, 99, right? So if I now update that and we view it, okay. Uh, we go all the way to the top, it stays in position. You go all the way to the bottom, it doesn't bounce. Now, if you got your top margin too low or too high, when you get to the bottom, your header will go like this. There'll be a subtle, tiny bit of movement. So you just gotta use your eye and get it to be the right top margin and that is now working. But there is one problem left. We're nearly there everyone. There is one tiny problem left. Can you see that we are not getting the transparency effect? That's because all we did was add some color but we didn't actually add any um, transparency to it. So we go over here to where we got the color for the column. I'm gonna go here now and I'm gonna drop it. And it's always good to do it when you've got your wording in there. Do it at the end, because now you're gonna have a much better idea for what kind of um, transparency effect you want. We'll go with that. You would obviously adjust your border, your shadow, and however you wanna do it. But let's now update that. So you can do it, and it's pretty easy to do. And the only code I've added into here 
was the code for the blurred effect, for the frosted effect, which I did in a column, and then for the buttons, and again, you didn't have to do it multiple times like I did, but I've done it multiple times because I like to adjust it per different button, but you go with what works with you if you want to add in any effects, but no blurred, no effects. You didn't have to do that CSS. Hey, I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag.